What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the channel. This is the RTH Podcast, man. I'm your host, nephew. And I'm checking in, man. So, opportunity of a lifetime for both of these gentlemen, man. They only got one fight. And then they get a shot at Saul Canelo Alvarez. Now, technically, the WBC gave that shot to David Benavidez, all right? Benavidez has been campaigning for a fight with the likes of Canelo Alvarez for a little while now. Uh, he's been WBC champion for a while now. He received interim WBC champion by fighting the likes of David Lemieux and dominating David Lemieux. That is right there. He dominated David Lemieux that entire fight. I don't even think it went past three. It could have been the fourth round where it knocked him out, but I'm assuming it was three. Uh, just going off memory mass. Um, yeah, so he pretty much dominated that dude, stills in term, and had been an uh, interim WBC champion, three belts a uh, WBC champion uh, uh, since then, and even seen the likes of Kayla Plant, a gentleman that Canelo recently beat to become undisputed at 168, um, to pretty much try to get a shot at Canelo Alvarez, was supposed to be in negotiations with Canelo prior to Jamel Charlo versus Canelo Alvarez. That's the craziest thing, right? David Benavidez were in negotiations with the likes of Team Canelo. We didn't find out until maybe like two or three weeks later, though, that Canelo wasn't even thinking about David Benavidez. He was thinking about Badu Jack, um, who is a 200-pound cruiserweight, right, to come down to 180 to meet him at a catchweight uh, in order for him to have a fight with Badu Jack, trying to avoid David Benavidez. You guys can say that that's not what was going on. Yes, it was because he couldn't even get the belt from Badu Jack at 180 because Badu Jack is a 200 pounder, not a 180 pounder. Canelo fighting Badu Jack would have been for absolutely nothing, okay? He would have had no real championship goal, no real legacy put on it. It would have just been a fight. More so like an exhibition, if you really want to be honest about it, right? Saying that to say, uh, since then, David Benavidez has been looking for a dance partner, try Jaime Munguia. Uh, he also tried the likes of David Morrell to a certain degree. And uh, he ends up getting Dimitri Boo Boo Andre. Now, here's the craziest thing about this particular scenario. Right after Andrade and Benavidez start talking in negotiations, the WBC finally... Stop sitting on their hands, finally get their head out of the Kool-Aid and decided, right, that they was going to give David Benavidez a shot at Canelo Alvarez, which is crazy, right? The dude been waiting this whole time to get Canelo, and finally they mandated now, right? But now he's staring at Dimitri Andrade, who is a tough individual and who has also wanted to fight the likes of Canelo Alvarez as well. So it serves the point, right? It serves the point that did David Benavidez do all of this stressing out to get the likes of Canelo Alvarez in the ring with him? Just so, right? Just so Dimitri Andrade can swoop in in the 12th hour, bruh, and steal it from him. That's a good question, huh? But here's the thing. Um, Andre, he, he got everything that it, it takes to beat Benavidez. Can he do it? That's the question. He got everything he take. He got everything it takes. He, uh, he's tall just like Benavidez. He got speed. He got power. Uh, he starts very fast in the ring, which is something that uh, maybe Benavidez does as well. Like I said, I seen uh, Benavidez with Lemieux, and he pretty much dominated the whole first well, he, he really dominated the whole fight. But that first round, yeah, man, Lemieux couldn't do nothing with him, right? And then uh, Caleb, he does a lot more so running than anything. I don't think that uh, Andrade is going to run from Benavidez like Caleb did. Caleb was running, trying to hit him with power shots and keep running, um, which is a good game plan versus Benavidez if his defense is faulty, right? That's a good game plan. That's what uh, Jamel Charlo was trying to do with uh, Canelo Alvarez. He was just trying to keep moving and pop him whenever he could. Now, that's a good game plan for a, a pure boxer 
if the the person that you're punching on, if the brawler that you're punching on, um, doesn't have great defense, but what David Benavidez proved in that particular fight was that he has great defense because Caleb couldn't get in at all. So trying to pop and move, he was wasting more energy and, and, and eating counter punches because he's trying to pop and move. Now I don't think that Dimitri Andrade though, I don't think he's going to come into the ring like that. I think he's going to look to have a fight with David Benavidez. I could be 100% wrong about that, y'all. But Dimitri Andrade starts early, bro. He don't wait. Like, he's not one of those guys. It take a long time for him to get out the gate. The problem is, for me, when I look at Andrade, his problem is around 7, 8, and 9. That's, that's, that's the question. That's his question marks for me. 7, 8, 9, and maybe even 10. Because he seems like he run out of gas because he starts so fast. He got to try to catch his breath towards those middle rounds. And that's where David Benavidez could be a little bit more of drastic heat around that time. So starting to fight early, it might end in a knockout, right? Because they both can start early. It ain't just uh, something that Andrade can do. It's something that Benavidez could do as well. So they both could start early, which a habit, bro, it could be a KO, right uh you know it, most of the time when you see stuff like that happen it'd be an early fight ko you think about Hagler hearns that was an early fight uh ko because they both was duking it off center stage right when the when the bell run how much they was trying to get out to each other so it could play out again with andrade benavidez bro but what if andrade beats benavidez bro that's the craziest scenario because i know like every time i bring up uh dimitri andrade on this page right i always got these long list of uh supporters on the channel who comes over and they always got something negative to say about dimitri andrade it's 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 he have a couple of fans here as well and they always duke it out with each other in the comment section but it seems like right it's just my opinion it seems like there's more people who dislike andrade than like andrade so it's, it, the craziest scenario plays out like this you get people who say this is a landslide for David Benavidez. He's gonna walk in, he's gonna dominate Andrade, he's gonna take everything with him, he's gonna be gone. Right? You have that those a uh, few people that feel that way. You have a slight uh, amount of people who say uh Dimitri Andrade could win it, right? So it, it's automatically looking like Benavidez would be the favorite to bet on Andrade, right? You might get a little bit more because he he's not gonna be seen as the A side, right? But if he were to win it, bruh, if he were to win it, he steals everything Benavidez has worked so hard to get, bruh. Like, that's crazy, huh? Like, it seems like Benavidez is putting it all on the line uh, to get the shot at Canelo. He's putting it all on the line versus a guy who's dangerous enough to take it from him in that aspect. It's just my opinion. And not to mention, we already know you a horrible fighter. You want payday. You want payday. That's exactly what Demetri Andrade heard when he tried to ask for a fight versus Canelo Alvarez. And that's how Canelo Alvarez treated him. So you kind of got to think about it like this. If he were to get that fight, bruh, with Canelo Alvarez, he not only gets an opportunity to prove that he's not a horrible fighter and that he did want to payday, because I'm pretty sure anybody who want to fight Canelo want to payday. But if he were to beat Canelo Alvarez, they could put him in a position where he's seen as one of the best fighters in the world. Not only that, but you got to think about that from David Benavidez's aspect as well, too. Because I'm pretty sure he wants to be seen as one of the greatest fighters in the world as well. To get one of on Canelo Alvarez definitely puts you in that seat. But this is the RTH Podcast, man. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm signing out. got to ask you guys before we get out of here, who do you have as your favorite, man? David Benavidez, Dimitri Andrade. Both of these guys can start fast in the ring. I do think that David Benavidez would take over those mid to late rounds um, because I do think that Dimitri Andrade gas out a little fast, but he's coming off of a knockout, okay? One's coming off a knockout, the other one isn't. Caleb Plant did make it to 12 with David Benavidez. Um, Dimitri Andrade's last opponent goes to sleep. So that's, that's two totally different things um, as far as going into this fight when it comes to momentum. Has David Benavidez put it all on the line at the wrong time, bruh? Has he done it at the wrong time? But also, you got to think about it like this. If, uh, if Benavidez does win this fight, right? You got to look at, like, Andrade had been waiting and not fighting and not really 
stepping up to the plate and fighting people and, and just holding off, you kind of got to look at it like, dang, did he kind of uh, drop his stock and uh, force himself into a scenario where it's uh, do or die where he could have had two or three more fights. You know what I'm saying? He could have had two or three fights. Best two out of three would they been to be there to get that shot at Canelo Alvarez as well. You see what I'm saying? Rather than having it in a do or die scenario, win or go home scenario, he pretty much could have had it in a scenario where, hey, let's, let's have this fight. Okay, you win. I learned my lesson on how you fight the whole nine. Let's do it again. And then, you know what I'm saying, two out of three, whoever get that third one gets Canelo. You dig what I'm saying? This is RTH Podcast. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm signing out. Y'all take it easy, bruh. Peace. RTH Podcast going live, man, with Brawl Night Champions for members only. Party chat debate for a shot at the Community Board Champion. But remember, it's a fight, so don't get knocked out and lose your place in the ranks. Or if you're just here to be a part of the spectacle, that's cool too. Sign up for the first tier to get front row seats to each event and get exclusive content not seen on YouTube. No my tier, but don't get kicked out. See rule books for more details. Oh yeah, ladies and the legends are included if you want to spectate or go for some gold. Brawl Night Champions, sign up now.